In part two of the Magna Carta, we're going to talk about the long-term impact and importance of this document, why it's so significant. Why are we still talking about it 800 years later? Let's take a look. Let's go. Upset. The barons are upset. The church is upset. The king has no choice but to sign these uh, this this thing called the Magna Carta with sixty three concessions. So so we need to understand the context in which he's signing this. Um, okay, good. So there, that's how we get to this this event here. Now, <clears throat> what does it lead to? What is this? What does this lead to? Well, we think about this as. Uh, leading to things like the rule of law or due process, or this idea that the Magna Carta was sort of the basis for constitutional law in England and in, in Western democracy. So it's a really uh, symbolic event for these things. So we're gonna, when we talk about the Magna Carta and its importance, you should be thinking about the rule of law or due process or trial by a jury, a fair, a fair trial. We should be thinking about these things because these are some of this these are some of the things that the Magna Carta inspired, okay? And, and these are some of the ideas that were 500 years later. So we're, we're, we're here, and we go now, let's say, to the Declaration of Independence. When was that written? The Declaration of Independence was when? Founding fathers were writing this when? In July of what? 1776. Constitution was when? That was in what? Uh, Constitutional Convention was 17, what? When was the Constitutional Convention? 1787, 1787 to uh, uh, 1789 is when the Constitution was ratified. The Bill of Rights was ratified shortly after. Okay, so we're looking at a 500 year gap, right? <laughs> That's a long time. But but again, this was a precursor to constitutional law. The founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, they're, they're looking at the Magna Carta and, and, and borrowing certain ideas uh, from the Magna Carta and making sure those ideas uh, of governments that are, are, are ruled by the people, not, not the monarch, that are run by uh, the rule of law, that have due process. They're incorporating these ideas into the founding documents. I'm trying to give you ideas of why this thing is so significant or symbolic, okay? It helps lead to, it helps inspire some of these other documents that are really important. Thumbs up team, give me a thumbs up. So if you had a reference uh, documents that are inspired Abide Magna Carta, Declaration of Independence, Bill of Rights, Constitution, these would all work. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, um, let's look at one of the more important clauses. This is clause, that, now there's 63 clauses, 63 clauses. And this is number 39. And number 39 and number 40 are probably the two most important pieces from this. But I'm just going to read you clause number 39. It says uh, in clause number 39, no free man shall be seized or imprisoned uh, except by the lawful judgment of his equals or by the law of the land. Okay, so basically no one should be arrested or imprisoned or seized by, uh, unless uh, they, they go through a fair trial, unless there's some type of due process. Does that make sense? meaning you can't take away someone's right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness without that fair trial. Now, why did they put this in? Because the king was arresting people left and right, torturing people, taking away their land, right? He was doing it all the time. If he didn't like you, he would do it. So this is saying that you can't do those things anymore. 
So they're kind of putting the power of a monarch in check. They're giving that power over to a, a legal system. Uh, and that legal system has to follow the rule of law. Let's talk about these two things. I want you to take a moment and I just want you to read over what it says here. Just what I've circled about the rule of law and then give me a thumbs up. Tell me when you've read that on the rule of law, please. This is important. Thumbs up when you read it. So it says here, uh, I like this definition here. The rule of law states that nobody is above the law, uh, which treats everyone equal and impartial. That's that's pretty important, right? Coming, come, So the king basically is not above the law. The king can't do things above the law, has to follow the rules. And then another, another major idea that's uh, inspired by this is due process. Do me a favor and read this over. Um, no, these slides are not in your packet, but they're on this video here. Just get these, when you watch this recording again, I want you to get these uh, definitions down, okay? So you might have to write down what I just said. I'm going through this in a lot more detail. It's supposed to be more visual. So right now, just take the visual things and listen to the story, and, and you might have to go back and listen to this again. Tell me when you've read this over on due process. It's a little harder one. It says due process is the legal requirement that states must respect all the legal rights that are owed to a person. So basically what this is saying is that you need to have a fair trial, right? You can't take away, deny someone their rights you know, rights to life, li uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You can't take away these things unless they have a fair trial. Thumbs up. So these are things that we, we uh, if, you, if you read over the full 63 clauses, you'll, you'll find these things. And, and the most important ones are clause number 39 and 40. Okay, this is 39. You have to have a fair trial. Okay, and and, uh, and 39 and 40 are connected to you know the rule of law and and due process. So these are these are pretty important ideas. Okay, when we connect the Magna Carta, uh, it's not really the Magna Carta was a forced document. It wasn't like. Uh, this was something in which King John signed, but he didn't write it. He was forced to do it. He didn't realize the importance of it. It was a, it was sort of like political theater. Uh, everyone was there, right? We, you can either sign this or we're going to kill you. You know, he, he wrote it under du duress. He probably didn't even read it. He probably didn't even know what he was signing. Does that make sense? I think it's pretty clear. He just signed it. He didn't even sign it. He, he didn't even sign it. There's no pen. He just took a stamp and put his seal on it. I, uh, a year later, a uh, 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 weeks later, he tried to annul the document. And a year later, he died. So, you know, it didn't really affect him that much. But, you know, um, over time, over time, it inspired future documents. And we're going back here. If we look at this, 12, 1215 A.D., uh, there is, we're talking about a lot of, this is almost a thousand years old, this document, it's 800 years old, right? So it is an old document. It inspired, uh, future documents, these things here, these things here, but really, you know, this one right here. So, so, um, it's inspiring some of these future documents and it's very, it's, it's supporting democratic governments and this idea of the rule of law and due process. And you know, giving over power to the people, as opposed to giving uh, and taking away power from monarchs. Okay, so if you're ever going to talk about the Magna Carta, you could say it inspired the founding fathers, and they incorporated some of the ideas that are referenced um, in it. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So oh, oh, jumped ahead a little bit. Uh, to summarize, to summarize here. The Magna Carta established or inspired the ideas of rights and liberty 
that even a monarch can't violate. Uh, the Magna Carta also affirmed that monarchs uh, should uh, rule with the advice of people. And we could say today the ideas, the, the rights and liberties, uh, the rights and liberties, that means your, your civil liberties. And habeas corpus, that means if someone accuses you, they, they have to be in the court uh, on trial too, or at least they have to give, they have to swear in court and, and, and present their case against you. Uh, our continued, that means we have to have a fair trial. So there's no secret trials. There's no trial where the, acu the accuser is not present. Habeas corpus means that if you're going to be accused of a crime, the person that's uh, accusing you has to be there and you have to be able to defend yourself fairly. So the, the rights, your civil liberties and your right to a fair trial, you know, these are continued and we see these ideas in the Bill of Rights and the U.S. Constitution. So you could say all these things, you could say the Magna Carta sort of inspired these things. If you're talking about its long-term significance. Uh, is 40 due process? Let me go back and let, let's, 40 is not there. And I haven't memorized all 60 clauses, but it's connected to a fair trial. 40, if you, if you go look at 40, and I actually think I have up, I think I have it up. So why don't we just, uh, don't worry, we'll get to that in a moment. I'll get to that word. Um, let me see. Let's see. Uh, this is one of the clauses that we're going to be reading in a moment, but let's go to clause 40 real quick. So this is the one that we just read. Can you see what I see? Can you see that? Clause 40 references the fair trial, just says it in a slightly different way. Let me see. Does it appear there? Yeah, it says, so clause 40, uh, we will not uh, sell or deny or delay right of uh, justice to anyone. So basically, we're not going to, you can't buy your way out of a crime. Um, and everyone has the right to sort of a speedy trial, a fair and speedy trial. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. All right. Hold on. I have to get to the, uh, I have to get to the punchline here. Okay. So team, this is the Magna Carta. And it's pretty important in terms of, uh, its influence on, on future legal documents, okay? Uh, now I'm doing this one because this is gonna be the topic, the main idea for our case study. So you may have to go back and you may have to do your own basic research on the Magna Carta. And if, and if you could, if you were going to do some basic research on the Magna Carta, uh, could, I, I would want you to be able to listen closely in one sentence summarize the Magna Carta. Could you try? I mean, make sure you're able to do that. In one sentence, magna, uh, summarize the Magna Carta. Have like the sort of the who, what, where, when. That's this. That's what this is. This is the when. This is the who, right? Um, this is the, the what. You want to be able to do that. Uh, what else do you want to be able to do? You want to be able to not only summarize sort of the who, what, where, when in one, one sentence of this idea, uh, but you also want to be able to explain why it's important, right? It's important because it inspired the founding fathers uh, 500 years later to incorporate some of these ideas of uh, a due process and the rule of law into the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Thumbs up. So we want to be able to, in one sentence, be able to tell what it is, one or two sentences what it is, and one or two sentences on why it's important. OK. And you could also include a little bit of this and a little bit of that. OK. And if you had to be asked, like, what's one document that it influenced? I don't know. You could throw in the Declaration of Independence, right? Or the U.S. Constitution or the Bill of Rights. Those are pretty important. All right. OK, team. Now I'm, say I'm doing this because this is going to be the key idea for our essay. Are you ready to go to that essay section? I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. Well, okay, let's do it. All right, team. I hope you enjoyed this series on the Magna Carta. This is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. I want to wish you the best on your exams. And if you if you like this video, you should check out one of Go Academy's classes. You can go to goacademy.com and learn all about it. But I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Team, have a wonderful day. Take care, team. Bye-bye.